So it's finally go time in the city of Toronto. All the attention that the Toronto Maple Leafs had fucking racked up is over, done with. They're getting ready to hit the fucking links. And the series that everybody in Toronto has been talking about since game one of the NBA, game one of the Toronto Raptors series, is the Toronto Raptors Cleveland Cavaliers. And how the hell the Toronto Raptors are going to fucking make their way past the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. Now, it's uh, happened a little uh, different. It's not the uh, conference finals that everybody expected. It's round two of the NBA. But if you're going to slay the fucking dragon, you might as well slay the dragon early before he fucking fully wakes up. Now, Cleveland swept the Indianapolis Pacers. But it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. A handful of fucking... Uh, well, they had, what, one one-point win... They had another two-point win. They had one where they won by like four or five points. So it was a very fucking tight, tight contest against uh, Paul George and the Indianapolis Pacers. And the Raptors are fucking better than the Indianapolis Pacers. Now the Raptors have kind of fucking... Uh, what's the word I'm fucking looking for, man? Metamorphous. They used some like metamorphous fucking type shit when they made those trades. And they went from a team that didn't really know how to play defense, didn't want to play defense, to a team that can play some quality fucking defense. Now Cleveland plays no fucking defense. Right now Cleveland's minus 500 to win this series. Toronto Raptors are plus 375. Raptors took them to six last year. The Raptors are going to win a game or two. Raptors are going to win a game or two. It's just, can the Raptors put back-to-back -back wins together against the Cleveland Cavaliers? Can they fucking do that? Can they fucking step on them fucking twice in a row and make LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love fucking sweat? And that's a strong roster over in Cleveland, not the strongest that they've had in previous years, some say. But I still say, fuck, man, you still got the core intact. You still got a fucking surplus, a very good fucking... Uh, Bench and secondary fucking players. Channing Fry, J.R. Smith. Um, Darren Williams is now the fucking backup point guard who's much better than Della Dova. Um, so they got, they got fucking the pieces there to support Kyle Culver, fucking dangerous three-point shooter. I said, the Rap can the Raptors protect the perimeter? Raptors got to protect the perimeter. A little bit different than they were, uh, uh, a little bit different than against the Bucks where they protected the paint against the Greek Freak. They got to get out and protect the perimeter. Will DeRozan, will Kyle Lowry step their fucking defensive game up, play some solid fucking defense, and shut down the three-point shooting of the Cleveland Cavaliers? We know P.J. Tucker is going to be called upon, and Pat Patterson is going to be called upon to do just that. Uh, Norman Powell, the young kid, is obviously going to get a shot in this fucking series. Something worked, something clicked. There were desperate, desperate times called for desperate fucking measures. And it worked for the Toronto Raptors. Now it's going to be a little bit different with the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're just better, smarter fucking players. More talented fucking players. They're also going to get the whistle predominantly more of the time. So it's going to be very interesting. And now these are my plays of the day. And uh, speaking of the Cleveland Cavaliers and Toronto Raptors, they kick off tonight. We'll hop up and in on them. It's a perfect segue into tonight's game in Cleveland. Cavaliers right now are minus six and a half point favorites. Total in this game is 209 and a half. It's down to 209. It was 209 earlier today when I kind of took a peek at it. So we're kind of seeing it go back and forth. Now I like the Toronto Raptors. The Toronto Raptors have a history. A history of sucking shit in the first game of series. Now that's usually at home. And that's usually when they're the favorite. Now, I look for the Toronto Raptors to kind of come out and try to get a jump on the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight. I think they hang with them. The Pacers hung with them in their first two games in Cleveland. The Raptors, I think, is going to be able to hang with them. Serge Ibaka is going to be a key fucking factor. Valanciunas has really got to fucking grow up and mature and become kind of a beast down there. You know, don't let Tristan Thompson, don't let this Kim Kardashian fucking celebrity fucking wannabe push you fucking around the paint Jonas Valanciunas like fucking come on man just fucking slap that fucking Tristan Thompson fucking wannabe around and fucking own the paint when you get the shot so I like the Raptors that plus six and a half I like the over in this game too I like the over I don't think the Raptors defense is quite up to the task 
at shutting down the Cavaliers in the first game. But I think they're going to be able to stop them enough to hang with it. Now, the Toronto Raptors, their offense has been, you know, it's suffered. It's suffered, but when you kind of focus on one thing, the other part of your game is going to suffer a little bit. Hasn't nearly been nearly as efficient as it was for the first half of the season, but Cleveland Cavaliers play shit fucking defense. And the Raptors should be able to get their shots. Kevin Love is a fucking pushover in the paint. He ain't going to fucking do anything fucking dangerous. DeRozan should be able to drive the paint at will. Should be able to get to the free throw line. So I like the over in this game. Now the Houston Rockets, they're in San Antonio to take on the Spurs tonight. It's going to be an interesting matchup. The Spurs struggled with the Memphis Grizzlies. It was kind of a home-and-home -home series, a homer series right until the end, until the Spurs uh, came from behind and squeaked one out on Memphis. It was on the Grizzlies that night. It was fucking bullshit fucking watching that. Should have cashed that out. But, you know, that's, that's part of fucking uh, laying down the wagers, fucking riding the waves. But they got Kawhi Leonard and Kawhi Leonard and that's it. They got nobody else. Tony Parker's past his fucking prime. Lamar Aldridge is fucking not nearly as good as what Lamar Aldridge was fucking five years ago. Not nearly as impactful. They got Kawhi Leonard and that's fucking it. The San Antonio Spurs. Right now they're six point favorites in this game. To start the series. Totals 214. Give me the beard. Fear the beard. Give me James Harden. I like Harden at plus six. Now, I saw this at plus five and a half earlier, so we're seeing some movement towards the Spurs, so maybe be a little bit more patient, but I doubt it. I don't think it's going to get any higher than plus six. I like the Rockets tonight. I like the Rockets. The Rockets hung tough in Oklahoma. They won two out of the three. The game they lost, they still hung relatively tough. Oklahoma was a desperate team in that game. They had to win that game. So I like the Houston Rockets at plus six. To cover against the San Antonio Spurs tonight. Now over in the frozen pond. The NHL playoffs continue tonight. Now finally the NHL is starting to fucking figure it out. Now, I don't know what the NHL is doing. They couldn't figure out how to fucking. Um, alternate the fucking games. So they wouldn't fucking overlap each other in the first fucking round. It was fucking frustrating as fuck. Seeing the programming and the scheduling of, of the fucking NHL. It was like, what the fuck are you guys doing, man? Then it comes to the second round. And they have the smart idea to put the Eastern Conference teams and the Western Conference teams on the same fucking night. So you have both Eastern Conference teams kicking off at fucking 7 o'clock. 7 or 7.30. It's like, what the fuck, man? You have the Western Conference teams, they don't quite fucking overlap nearly as much. Because you have a Midwest Fucking showdown with Nashville and St. Louis. And you got the West Coast team with Edmonton and Anaheim. But still, they do. And if you get in overtime, it's a fucking problem. Like, how hard is it? Like, like, how hard is it? Like, I would definitely be the guy in the room when they're coming up with this fucking shit saying, wouldn't it be fucking smarter to go east-west, east-west? So we can get to the, fill up the primetime fucking slots on not only the east coast, but the west coast fucking on every night. And our fans don't have to worry about games fucking overlapping unless it goes deep in the fucking overtime. Then it is what it is. But like, fuck, man. It's just not smart, man. The NHL just comes up with a brilliant idea after a brilliant idea after a fucking brilliant idea. Don't even get me into these offside fucking replays and shit, man. Just ridiculous. But, the Washington Capitals, they take on the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight. The Washington Capitals are a desperate fucking hockey team tonight. They need a fucking W. They need a W fucking bad. They need Braden Holtby to step the fuck up and be the best player on the fucking ice. Now the Pittsburgh Penguins are just a fucking machine right now. Sidney Crosby has just got given them his special... You know, uh, if you ever watch fucking Looney Tunes, I mean, uh, Space Jam, Michael's special stuff or Michael's secret stuff, and it's just water in a water bottle, but it gets fucking everybody, all the fucking Looney Tunes all fucking pumped up, take on the monsters. This is what Sidney Crosby does. He's just got Sidney Crosby's special, so he just fills up the fucking water bottles. Hey, boys, take a fucking squirt. And it's just a fucking war machine, basically. I guess in these times of days, I guess I shouldn't say fucking war machine. But it's just a fucking machine, man. Uh, Penguins are minus 115 home favorites right now. It's basically a pick -em. Total in this game is five and a half pucks. Now, I think the Washington Capitals come to fucking play tonight. 
they can still lose. That's fucking hockey. But I like the under. I think it's going to be a tight checking, typical fucking NHL playoff game, 2-1, maybe 3-2 overtime. But I like the under 5.5 in the Washington Capitals Pittsburgh Penguins game. And we'll finish this off over on the baseball diamond here. We'll run through this quick. I usually like my late night baseball, but I really couldn't find anything that I like tonight. But the Toronto Blue Jays, the struggling Toronto Blue Jays, uh, they've won two in a row. Last team in the MLB to win two games in a fucking row. The Toronto Blue Jays finally accomplished it. Fucking congratulations. As you can see, I'm not a Blue Jays fan at all, and I've been smiling every time I fucking see a Toronto Blue Jays fucking highlight. But Marco Estrada takes the ball for the Jays tonight. They're in New York to take on the Yankees. I don't like the fucking Yankees either. Severino's on the mound for the Yankees. The Yankees are minus 175 on the money line. Total in this game is 7.5 runs. I like the over tonight. I like the over. Luis Severino, he's pitched three quality fucking games in a row. And it's Luis Severino. He's a gas can. I used to be a big Luis Severino fan. Big supporter. Big fucking backer. I'm quite surprised at what he's done this year so far. He's, he's waiting. He's got a fucking shit game just sitting in his back pocket waiting to fucking happen. It's going to happen tonight. The Jays' bats are kind of waking up. They're still beat up. They're still injured. But they're waking up a little bit. Now, Marco Estrada. I'm not a big Marco Estrada fan. I don't know how the hell this guy gets it done. Fuck, he's got a good changeup, though. I'll give him credit for that, man. Fucking master of deception, I guess, right? He's even deceiving me. But I don't think he deceives the New York Yankees hitters tonight, led by fucking Aaron Judge, who should be on my fucking fantasy team. I don't know how the fuck I didn't pick him up. Got him in one of my leagues, but... Pisses me off every time I see that guy hit a home run. But I like the over 7.5 in the Blue Jays-New York Yankees game. I think the hitters jump all over the pitchers tonight. And finally, last play of the night, Cincinnati Reds. Where is it? The Cincinnati Reds, they're at home against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Garrett's on the mound for the Reds. He got lit the fuck up last game, but he had he had a bad game waiting in his pocket too. He's a rookie. He pitched three fucking real quality games in a fucking row. One fucking masterpiece, if not two masterpieces for a rookie. He had a bad game waiting to happen. He knew it was going to fucking happen. And it happened. And it exploded. I think he fucking went like three and two thirds, gave up nine runs. Now Garrett Cole, he's been pitching pretty consistent this year so far to start the year. But he does not like the Cincinnati Reds. Does not like the Cincinnati Reds. His career fucking uh, numbers against the Cincinnati Reds are not good. Cincinnati has won the last one, two, three, six starts that Garrett Cole has fucking made against the Cincinnati Reds. And Garrett Cole has taken the decision, the loss, in all six of those fucking starts. He's given up at least three earned runs in each of those starts. And he was unable to go six innings in any of those starts. So Garrett Cole does not like the Cincinnati Reds. And Cincinnati Reds, on the other hand, sure like fucking Garrett Cole fucking pitching. Now, Amir Garrett, he had one of his fucking solid, you know, easy to say masterpiece outings for a rookie, you know, against the, uh, against the Pittsburgh Pirates earlier this year. I uh, look for him to be comfortable on the mound, and I like the Cincinnati Reds at minus 105 at home. Wish we were getting a little bit more value with the Reds, but whatever, it is what it is. The well, Champions League kicks off tomorrow. Semifinals, the Madrid Derby. Just doesn't get much fucking better than this. You know, uh, a lot of people are... Well, I'm a, I'm a Premier League fan. I'm always bitching that the English teams can't get to the semi-final now. But you got a fucking Madrid derby, man. You can't get up for a fucking Madrid derby, man. You know it's going to be fucking nasty. I have a fucking lean to the under. I think it's going to go under. I really do. I think it's going to go under and it's going to be all to play for down at the uh, Vicente uh, Calderon in two weeks' time. But you can find my work on Twitter at kjohnstonmike.com. You can find my work on my website, kylejohnsonmiked up.wordpress.com. Remember, if you're not laying money down the table, you're not winning.